Thundergrunt. Hey guys, Bob. <laughs> gonna see you. awkward he's pause. Gonna, that awkward pause is trademark now. He's go <laughs> hey, he's gonna say who, who first? First, uh, welcome to Writers Blockbusters. We're the show that treats the final edit of a movie like the script. And if Reddit has a problem with that, they can continue to have a problem with that. Yeah, that's <laughs> odd. <laughs> anyway, today <laughs> we're gonna talk about the Academy Award. Best picture, best director, it's best kind screenplay, of, best screenplay. It kind of swept, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, it sort of swept. It like soft swept the Academy soft Award. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna talk about Parasite. Yes, and because there's nothing more that, than three white guys talking about Parasite that needs to be said <laughs> on the internet, right? We're off our game. We didn't introduce ourselves. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna get there. I was still getting there. Well, first, we're going to go around the table and introduce ourselves. That's right. Go ahead. I am Jimmy George. I am a full-time script consultant and screenwriter. I am Jamie Nash. I am a screenwriter, and my book, Nomad, is now on audio at Audible. Go get it. <laughs> What's your Twitter handle? Oh, it's at Jamie underscore Nash. Did you give yours? I didn't. Give it right now. At Jimmy R. George. Jimmy doesn't want any more followers. Yeah, stop like, fucking stop following, following me. Yeah, no, no. I want, I'm want. i Bob Rose at Thundergrunt Bob, but I want you to follow Jimmy because Jimmy's Twitter is like the only marketing we have. Yeah. That's right. That's and right. no, and I, I don't just mean that in like a sense of us as a show. I mean, like, literally, I don't know what to do to market anything anymore without Twitty's Twitty. Twitty. Jimmy's Twitter following is the only thing we have. <laughs> you can call me Twitties. I the like Twitties. it. They're Jimmy's fans. The Twitties. <laughs> the Twimmies. <the> like, <laughs> the Twimmies. In Twitter numbers, you're not that famous, but to us, we're all so low. It's yeah. like you're the one we all look up to. Okay. You're right. what we have, Jimmy. Don't you understand that? <laughs> mm -hmm. It's not, you can't give up. All we those late nights tweeting about dumb shit. Yep. It's been worth it. That's it, because you're all we got. Okay. He's the cool table. Because we know Reddit. On the cool table. <laughs> That'll be a first. <laughs> Reddit doesn't work. Instagram doesn't work. Facebook no. is dead. You're it, man. Yeah. You're it. <laughs> anyway, Parasite. Parasite. On topic. Screenwriting. Screenwriting. Jamie, who wrote this shit? <laughs> um, awkward pause. No. <laughs> Bong Joon Ho. Right. There you go. It's a pretty easy it's pronunciation. An easy name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's phonetically spelled. Yes. Yeah. After all these episodes of awkward it's name weird pronunciation, that the this is pretty normal. Is the easy one to pronounce. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Isn't that? The it's one? not uh, Carrie Fuga Fuganaga. Yeah, yeah. We've had right. so many. He's where... directing um, the next Bond movie. He directed the next Bond movie. The guy oh, who, really? Wow. The, na the name you fucked up the most. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just say that one really fast. <laughs> yeah. Carrie Fuganaga. <laughs> Uh, so, so parasite. Yeah, yeah. Let's so, talk about uh, let's talk about how, how it plays with genre. Well, I was gonna I was gonna go over his filmography. Super. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's so, do that. I first became aware of him with the host, which I remember. Um, yes. I remember seeing everybody was talking about it. I don't know. That might have been one of those ones I got a bootleg for at the old horror convention. <laughs> I can't remember. It was a little um, bit of his kept secret in America for a it, while. It was hard to yeah. find, and yeah. I remember I kind of sought it out and had to go through some shady black market deal to get a hold my hands on it <laughs> uh and then uh but that but that movie was almost like a godzilla kind of thing that happens i remember there's this great beach scene it opens up with but then like i was telling bob then it goes into some other movie it's like this big weird epic where they're living underground and they have bows and arrows and all yeah, kinds have of you seen not seen it bob not yeah. Seen it. oh yeah yeah no uh, when it i the reason i saw it was because when cloverfield came out a movie I do not like. <laughs> when Cloverfield came out, I actually um, like Cloverfield. I, I know, I figured. I like Me the too. sequel. <laughs> I do. I love yeah, the sequel. Yeah, but uh, when that came out, everyone that third kept... one was awesome. 
Paradox. <laughs> Paradox. Paradox. Yeah, look at the poster hanging up right behind yeah. me. Um, a pa- <laughs> for Cloverfield Paradox. <laughs> Man, we got to get on topic. Uh, <laughs> when Cloverfield came out, everyone kept saying the host was a big recommendation for some reason. I see the parallels, sort of. The class system is. In yeah, the, in but the I, it's about. Po- I just remember know, people being like, "Have nots is there." I remember people being like, "Well, you should see the host if you want." <laughs> you know when, <laughs> which is odd. To, which to, is it, uh, very odd. Yeah, but that was well, the reason go. I originally watched it. So. I I knew people that are big fans. They talk about, and I have never seen Memories of Murder. Uh, I have not either. I haven't either. I've heard. I've heard <laughs> a lot of good things about that. At least yeah. we're all equally ignorant. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Other movies that he has I'm written. a huge fan of Snowpiercer. Snowpiercer. Love Snowpiercer. Yes. Yeah, and he, he wrote two between those, Tokyo and Mother, which I also haven't seen. I saw Snowpiercer. And I haven't seen Okja. Is that how you pronounce uh, Okja. it? Okja's awesome. I love yep. Okja. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that was made for Netflix. Yep. Uh, and then Parasite. Okay. So I, I was saying earlier that you know I teach screenwriting. My college students are big fans of, this is one of their favorite directors in general, if I'm to generalize. Uh, Edgar Wright. And Bong Joon Ho. It's very interesting. So, so then I that makes me feel like they they like the style. Could be. You know what's Could funny be. too is Could uh, be the theme. Jamie, you've brought it up on this show. Mm-hmm. How when people say their favorite filmmakers, it mm-hmm. always tends to be writer directors. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or, or remember you also asked us that one time name your f- yeah it's always tricky to name a screenwriter that's not that's a, not also a director. name your favorite yeah. screenwriter right. that's yeah. the hard question your favorite screenwriter yeah but, but hardly anybody but can Edgar Wright and Bong Joon Ho are both yep. writer directors mm-hmm. right yeah yeah so that's very interesting Edgar Wright kind of surprises me I feel like that was like a tw- he's he was kind of hot the hot thing twenty years yeah it ago. seems like it's been a little while since his cooler movies though they love Baby Driver I have to say yeah the students love the Baby Driver students <laughs> love Baby Driver well <laughs> sequels greenlit so wow yeah okay but we're gonna talk we're not talking about Baby Driver <laughs> we might talk about Baby Driver one day who knows yeah maybe what well, has a similar midpoint twist to Parasite no it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Parasite's music scenes are way worse. <laughs> right. uh, so, as we said, with the host especially, I think that's the best example. Jamie, was, I'm assuming that's what you're trying to bring up, Jamie. Yeah. Genre and tone, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it's, something we want to talk of, about. You know, the host uh, was an example of a movie. I was expecting just Godzilla horror movie, and yeah. that became something else. It was kind of silly in some ways. It had some sense of humor to it. Were you were you inspired by the marketing there too? Because probably the marketing for this movie actually made me think it was something so different. Interesting. Is that and that, I, that I, I thought sort of I thought it was going to be a experience s- that informed your experience. I mean, obviously, it, once yeah. I got into the movie, I was like totally yeah. into it. But yeah. like, I thought it was going to be a supernatural horror film. Yeah. Oh. From the from the, from the title, the title and poster. And, you know, I didn't see a trailer before I watched it. So it was just the title and poster. I was like, it looked to me like a horror movie. It's, of some real, sort. it's really just a Korean rehash of The Boy. No, in some ways. God, I, I saw The Boy too. So. <laughs> the Boy 2, you saw? Part 2. Oh. Brahms, The Boy Katie too. Holmes for the win. She um, she looks tired. Yeah. So. Poor, yeah. She She's had a long couple years. Yeah. Anyway. So, so the. Yeah, the tone of this, I went into this uh, cold, this movie. I didn't know anything about it. I A lot of people were saying great things about it. I kind of purposefully stayed away. I watched it. And uh, it's funny. I was I was telling Bob about it. Some Something about the translation of it, the reading subtitles. I'm not sure we, we as non-Korean speaking people totally land the tone of what you know what i mean we're we're doing some interpretation of the tone yeah yeah. do yeah, you yeah, think yeah. that's why because because and and i'll let you keep going yeah, yeah. but because no the number one thing i have heard from people who love this movie is a championing it for it's it's like doing things with tone that we don't usually see mm-hmm. and for me i didn't feel that way at all i yeah. didn't feel that whatsoever i felt like it was very standard um, do you think that that has a lot to do with why so many people are feeling that way? They're you also, reading it. You also aren't normal. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> in a sense. You you probably read more scripts than, I mean, even Jamie, right? Yeah, I, mean, I read yeah. 40 pages a day every day. Yeah, you're not. Amateur scripts. You've pretty much taken yourself out of being a normal human being when it comes to the <laughs> subject. So, yeah. But, uh, okay. You, yeah. Uh, but but I the think... way that you framed that, yeah. that does make sense. Like, reading it sort of messes with your ability to read the tone. I, yeah, and so when I went into it, I was like. You're this... saying the actual act of reading it. 
I well, I'm not sure the act. Oh. I, maybe the translation part. We're gonna sound Next like one. some ignorant guy. <laughs> we sure are. Oh, you gotta read you it. Gotta read yeah. it. I came to watch a movie. No, it, it's, <laughs> yeah. It's more the fact that you might interpret their acting differently from the words. You know, because you, you're not I, processing. Yeah. You both put your own time. impetus on a lot of stuff. And, you're and, and you're I'm asking from a general response, yeah, 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 not yeah. from our response. I'm asking from the general public's yeah. response, saying, "Yeah, my, mine's not so much to say because I have to read it. It's more because it's in a different language, so I'm processing it differently right. than I would another film. So I am doing a different sense of feel for the tone. Or yeah, there's some, there's some." inflection and things that are lost to me uh at times yeah. is that is word that play or i know, I, like I don't want to skip ahead but is that why you think that a lot some people even us interpreted the genre differences yeah. there well, because we don't know what the exact tone is supposed to be in the moment yeah i i don't know and I, i'm not even saying i had problem with it i no, sort no, of no 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 yeah and yeah. i thought i because i actually you know I like the tone of this movie. It's also, yeah, an, ex- I, yeah. but it's it's also almost, an execution thing. It's not really a writing thing, it's, right? It's yeah. strange because I'm almost wondering if I like, sometimes I'm watching it, like if I'm over liking it because it's not in English. It's a strange thing with me. Like I, I freaking like, love foreign movies. Yeah, me too. Yeah, same, I, I same. kind of, yeah. I kind of am like, there, there are movies like I always joke, like a movie like Underworld, if that was in German, it would probably be my favorite movie. <laughs> yeah. But um, it's not, so it's not. Uh, but anyway, so this movie... To, it starts out almost comedic. It, to me, it was comedic. Like I'm, mm-hmm. it's dark comedy to me in the in the opening. Like but, when they're letting the fumigation kill the bugs, kill the and they're bugs like, "Leave the windows yeah. open, we can kill the bugs." Like to me, that's you know extreme dark humor. Um, maybe uh, you know I could see in some contexts where it's not humor at all, where it's just dark. Like right. oh my god, if it was treated, these, but a these little people, I, it's pl- I feel like execution wise, even with the acting and the music. That's my number yes, one. Yes, yes. Everything from like the fumigation, their house, all the way through like the I'll call it the heist section. Yes, yeah. It the music and stuff to me reads, as far as my American sensibilities, as it's supposed to be fun and light. Fun and light. And we're watching this underclass family get you know get a grift, <laughs> and it's fun. Yeah, so, yeah. It's it a- play. It's playful, right? I the the thing that it reminded me of was was the show oh, um, yeah, Shameless. Yeah. Uh, it reminded me a lot of the show Shameless because that show is about people that are you know down on their luck, can't afford the bills. Uh, you know their house is leaking, taking advantage of the taking upper class, advantage yeah. of the dumb upper class. That's kind of the idiots. They're yeah. the smart ones because they have to live this poor existence. Um, For anyone listening, mind you, we're talking about our feelings as we watched it. Yes. Like yeah, I yeah. like we get it now, but we're saying like the the tone will shift as you're watching it for the first yeah, time. Yeah, coming it's, into a cold. Especially. Coming into a cold. Yeah. You know, yeah. I just want to make sure they don't how you should be talking I want to make sure they, writing. they don't yeah. I want to make sure they don't think we're like still now we're like Ooh, yeah, trying this to figure movie out. Was about. No, yeah. no, no, I'm no. not saying that. Yeah. So yeah, we're trying to dissect dissect yeah. yeah. The to me it comes moment. in with a shameless tone, but in a weird sort of way, I don't know that it shifts out of that too much it mm-hmm. constantly because even when it gets a little darker yeah. it's still it still kind of has a humor to it it's just a darker humor and, and shameless shameless might be a little more silly than this, this it's also a tv show it is a tv <laughs> yeah, yeah, show yeah. this yeah the themes yeah. and you can you have tons of time to mess the, with this. The, the, the themes yeah. in the darkness of this do have an undercurrent of reality and that's yeah. what makes it so cool is because you can get your your sadness and your and your um depression and stuff with you're kind of smiling sometimes or well or i don't know there's a right. dark laugh to it right it's yeah. not like you're it's definitely a dark yeah. comedy yes yeah. that's intentional that's so, totally yeah. intentional like yeah so i i Maybe have like coen brothers-esque yes uh, dark comedy yes. absolutely yeah i mean there's actors chewing scenery that's yeah. very coen brothers yeah 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 i have a couple questions based on some of the stuff that you usually use to that to like define tone so for me like so jamie you you mentioned dust till dawn as a as an example on, yeah, yeah um, especially for the twist in the middle yeah that's kind of the premier example of tonal shift right, right? but yeah. i don't think that's a i don't think that's a i don't feel that that drastic shift that no, you're no. describing because because to, to me i think the dread is there like i feel personally um, and maybe that's just my own personal station in life being lower. I wouldn't even call myself middle class at my current state. Like I don't have a car. Like I'm 
financially struggling so i related to the financial struggle of yeah, these yeah, people yeah. so so like when the when the fumigation stuff happened and it was funny and i laughed but i also felt dread for them like they could get sick like i thought oh maybe like sure. maybe they're gonna be, like one of them is gonna have like toxic poisoning yeah. and be like slowly dying the rest that, of the movie the, ex- the execution of that scene seemed like comedic it was, kind of, it was comedic no, no. though I, right. I thought it was comedic but i felt dread for them yeah yeah and then the, the second that they go into that he goes into the house and from that point forward and that's only 13 minutes in mm-hmm. i felt dread yeah like i felt like if this goes bad like it, it could be really bad for them and then the the deeper they got into it the more dread i felt for the potential um you know stakes for what happens if they're why, found why, out why do you think you felt the dread cuz i think that's a key thing cuz really it's low stakes in some ways right. like if they get caught they probably get fired and they're back to where they, they get asked to leave. so i yeah. they get asked to i leave. think yeah. the the so i think the trick that how it disarms you from feeling like it's not hard is because no one is vocalizing the fear of survival stakes. Mm-hmm. So the lack of vocalizing any stakes for a single moment of the first half, no one is vocalizing any fear of what's going to happen if things go wrong. And I think that lack of vocalizing anything, like there's zero debate well, about the, whether they're, they're the going to get in trouble. Is extremely. I love this. The family is so matter of fact that they don't question the plan. Right. There's no question. Like, enough, like they know they're in such dire straits that they're like, okay, now what's next? Right. Now we do this. Right. There's no like it's not moral judgment at all. Right. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. so so like okay, for instance, like I, oddly enough, I'll compare the Groundhog Day. The lack of a deadline f- makes you feel urgent because this could be f- so ever for like them. for yeah. so for me, the lack of anybody vocalizing what could go wrong is so naive. And so in denial, and so and and like I want to talk about this and later. When we go into the theme. To the their, dis- their dissociation from what they're doing and the dangers for me made me feel scared, and made me feel like <laughs> once this goes bad, it's gonna go really bad. Right, right. And I feel like the reveal and how it goes from forward, it's. It's sort of like you've been watching a horror movie the whole time. You've been watching a really slow horror movie, and then now their choices, every choice they make is more more immoral and worse, and like all the consequences that lead to like the killing and the death and all that are just a, a result of everything they've been doing the entire and time. It's not like it keeps locking in, that tone in more, it's more and more and more, and more ratcheting up with that, everything that everything, kind of falls into place. They with keep them. making the wrong choice and doing something wrong again, doing something morally wrong. Is well, what I, mean. I would say that doesn't start till the second half. The yeah, first half just like keeps going and going all the and good going. shit starts falling into place, locking them into the plan that they have no clue how it's gonna. But I mean, end, it's right? like it's yeah. way before the midpoint that they that the montage with the peach and that that is the most like one of the most fucked up things I've seen. Like t- like a whole family rallying around trying to give this person anaphylactic shock is is pretty fucking low. Like and and none of them are questioning well, it whatsoever. I was gonna bring that up. To- the peach stuff to me is where I think the movie does change tone. Right. When I first watched it, I was like, all right, so we're here now because this is now without hindsight, without understanding the themes of the movie. Right. Because at that point I was like, okay, well now it's kind of hard to sympathize with these characters. Right. And they're right, doubling you know, down. They're, so they're doubling they're, down it's on it. a wrong way goal movie. And they're just like, they're like, no, we love this wrong way. We're going to keep going. And it's like, I love that. Cause it, it challenges. I you love to, that too. It challenges you to be like, how do I feel about these people at every step? I of absolutely the way? love that. It reminded right. me, <laughs> people, it reminded me a lot of Joker. <laughs> and and like I hate saying that, but no, because Don't it's bring about it up. No. well, no, I'm because it's I'm like they are really hammering home, and I didn't break them down. They're hammering home those rooting influencers. You know, I, I was saying this this could be a good rooting influencers one because they're technically in some movies these would be bad people, right? right? They're screwing over somebody. They're they're making advances on the young girl. They're scamming a therapy to a little kid. They're doing they're. They're so anaphylactic they're shock. They're, get, <laughs> yeah. they're getting yeah. people fired with the panties in the car. They're doing all these. They're hurting people. Yeah. But um, because of the theme of the class system thing, it's like you kind of go with it. But they right? spent 10 yeah. minutes showing us how bad. hard, yeah, how yeah. bad they're. They, 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 when we meet them, they're working an honest living. They're fucking folding pizza boxes for dirt. You know what I mean? Yeah, and they're yeah, doing yeah. the best. They're watching YouTube videos. They're trying, man. Like there's they've got they've they got live... toxic fumes in their face watching in the, in in the a basement. Yeah, in, in, in a, a basement. basement. Yeah. Like uh, 
and and like and there's something about their family unit that they don't make them like shameless where they all kind of hate each other they actually support each other and kind of are a yeah team, you know? absolutely so yeah, I lo- they're they're very much they're very much like they and they're on the same mindset too there's not like a defector in the family no you know what i mean all. they're all just like we know the goal and we're in this together and we can get yeah. we'll get to the what is it saying and stuff in a little while yeah, yeah, but yeah, like we'll it's so for me anyway i felt the dread i felt the dread from the beginning so like i even though i was laughing and i do i think it was played for comedy and i think that was executed intentionally to disarm yeah, 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 us yeah, yeah. so that holy shit when things get serious you feel it extra it's got this like yeah. extra umph like cohen brothers it's like when cohen brothers stuff goes dark somehow it feels darker than most movies like you know when when things start getting really yeah, dark and, and the comedy aspects i'm not sure that they're belly laugh aspects no i don't like, think we're no, saying that we're it's saying more that. like the toxic stuff comes in you're like oh god, god that's so horrible Jesus Christ. yeah oh, <laughs> don't you and you know <laughs> say again like don't you think it's a little bit of our american sensibility of tone yeah it's creeping in there like oh is it because we always expect a movie kind of to set the tone up in the first right five right minutes. we have we have very yeah. strict ways that we <laughs> ways experience the story yeah. yeah a traditional story so yeah but i oh okay so the tone qu- the tone that... question for you yeah so jamie you have your tone scale you want to explain the tone scale yeah well i always say that one way to do a tone scale especially if you're working with collaborators and your tones all over the place but also if you're working by yourself is to kind of figure out similar movies and maybe even make a scale out of them. Uh, so the one example I always use is Batman because it's so ranges. Right, right. Uh, yeah. You can have, you know, maybe Nolan and things like that are on one end of the scale. Adam West or Lego Batman is on the far end of the scale. And you just assign numbers like one to ten to each one and figure out where yours is. So you can say, if my if my joke or my um, plot point were in this movie, would it fit? Or these yep. characters or attitudes... Would it fit the tone, uh, the realism kind of aspect? Yeah. Or would people buy into it? And the self-awareness is a big part of it, the yep. self-awareness. Yep. And I feel like if you set a number, if you found your, you your know, Batman your scale. your your uh, parallels to what you're trying to achieve with this movie, mm-hmm. and you put it, like, at a seven, I feel like anything that happens at minute one would land just the same, wouldn't feel like it's a different movie and didn't belong as what happens in the end. It's just, I feel like there's no tonal variation at all. I feel like everything fits. I don't feel like suddenly we're watching some movie where this would never happen in the first half. No, like, no, you know no, what no, I mean? No. Like, I wouldn't buy this I in the first half. I also think from Dust Till Dawn, while it's a, an example of that, it's also more, it's not as much about tone as it is about, like, content. Yeah. The content of yeah. From Dust Till Dawn switches. It's still like the tone of stakes the, and everything the is weird, still there. The other reason Dust Till Dawn, while it fits but it doesn't fit, is Dust Till Dawn was advertised as a vampire movie. So it's more like you were sitting there, when's the vampire? When right, are the vampires right. showing up? What a right. mistake that was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it would have been a what shocker. A mis- what a mistake yeah. that was to do yeah. that. But like, I guess I guess what I'm saying is from an instructive standpoint, I don't think this is a movie you go to where you learn like this is how you take a movie that's a comedy and suddenly it's a horror movie. No. Do you know no, what no, I mean? No, no, no. I but, but but that's what I I'm hearing a lot. I'm hearing the 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 championing of this being some thing that like you can learn from and things are you can make movies that have never been made before by by following this example and i'm just saying that this is like a pretty traditional dark comedy mm-hmm. that turns into a, like a horror you know what i mean yeah. it just progresses naturally yeah it's kind of like w- when we talk about fargo fargo has some moments where you really laugh i mean yeah. you really laugh at him but it also has some very violent moments it has some very sad moments it has all kinds it has a range of things in fargo I think that's what this is. It's, I think you know, so too. You know, what I found funny about the Oscars this year is that, or just in general, Bong Joon Ho has really been talking a lot about his. He considers Scorsese his like the one you know he bows to and everything. But what you guys just said, I'm like, yeah, it's weird because I feel like your movies are way more Cohen Brothers. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, yeah, I, I, I've never, I don't, I've never yeah. heard him talk about but, that. But, but when you say that, Goodfellas is definitely a movie that has you're right, laughs you're right. and love, and we kind of Goodfellas like, yeah. is fucking hilarious, <laughs> and, and it's, it's also really dark as hell. Yeah, yeah so yeah, I you're think right. Like, like, um, Scorsese imitators, like Boogie Nights, kind of a very funny, very serious, mm-hmm. very sad. So I think we've Quentin seen Tarantino. Yeah, he yeah. considers his movies comedies. Yep. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, yeah. I, yeah, I just I I felt like we should. 
the big takeaway for me watching this yeah. movie is all about the genre. So, and tone. so it's yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. I mean, basically, what we're just saying it's is, a mastery of it more than it. It's not a mistake. Yeah, it's yeah. a mastery or of some, it. doing something yeah. completely different. This yeah. navigates something that's hard to do, which is mix kind of a dark humor with seriousness. But it never shifts. It never takes a left turn, and it doesn't start one thing and go left. The story world it doesn't go from parody to that's, horror, yes. right? It Which goes, I think is what some people have been are saying. saying. Yeah. A lot of people are saying they think that first part is parody. It's not. No, or, or I'm just. just I'm seeing silly? a lot of responses that, above all things, are championing the use of tone as sort of something that's never been done before. And I, it, I just uh, may, maybe they. It's over- not that it's it's that it's done masterfully. <laughs> yeah, that's what not used to watching good movies yeah. i guess <laughs> yeah, <that's>, right yeah. <laughs> yes you watched a good movie yeah yeah that's how it's done you watch the guy who really knows what's up <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but genre and tone is really it's like it's sort of the the toughest thing to get right and and this is a great example of i also it. think that the tone has to do with the theme but we'll get to that later yeah, right yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it kind of slides on that scale of theme. Yeah. interesting because you say genre and tone what is the genre of this movie I think it's a horror movie. Really? And th- I think it's a horror movie with comedy. I would yeah. say thriller. thriller. Thriller, yeah. Thriller but I guess seems more. Well, you know, it's questionable. It feels a way. lot like Get Out, and that, thriller that was is, the argument. For isn't me. thriller a category they made up for video stores? Probably. I think it was because yeah. they didn't know where to put certain movies. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. I, yeah. I, I would, yeah. horror seems rightish, <laughs> but yeah. I mean, it's. I used to. I, I always look at video stores because I used to manage one for a decade. It, the reason. The reason. Where I, do I put this movie? <laughs> thriller section the reason i don't That's <laughs> think of it foreign movies but thriller yeah, yeah yeah the reason i don't think of it so much as horror is the good guys are always in control sort of thing i don't know it's like i mean i a would bomb say under the it's table the, but it doesn't really unleash to the end wouldn't uh, you say it's the worst nightmare of the characters coming true the uh, poor the characters, poor characters yeah oh, the main characters and the rich characters yeah yeah it's their worst nightmares coming true and they lots of people die and I, it I don't is know, but there's dude, murder and mayhem you know what <laughs> i changed my answer it would just be in the drama section because yeah. okay. american beauty kind of is that yeah in yeah way, and there's a dread in american beauty too the good whole time point. everybody dies good point yeah yeah good point somebody ship. gets their brains blown the out vhs would yeah. be Actually, in the drama similar. section it jimmy american beauty it's got yeah. elements totally of that like yeah that too. Yeah. It would sit in the VHS, in the drama section of the VHS. I just, that's what it would be. That, I like <laughs> so, that. I just, okay, yeah. like. when I mean, It's tricky to categorize. It's it is. really tricky. It is. It is like, tricky. when he entered the house, it gave me the same exact feeling as when Chris entered the house and Get Out, which is a marginalized person, an outsider, is in this wolf's den of rich people who think they are, that he is nothing, right? So it just gave me that. Yeah. Also, Get Out is overtly right. a horror movie. Right. right. Well, right. Here, here's the difference. I think this is the reason I think it's a little different for me, is I think the heroes in this case are the ones with the secret. They're the wolves. That's it. Yeah. The, the heroes are the wolves. The heroes That's are the wolves. That's the difference. Whereas yes. when he walks in and Get Out, the dread's there because we know they're, they're the They're in the driver's yeah. seat. Yeah. They're so in the I, driver's seat. Anyway. Yeah, I got you. A that's a good, thing. no, that's a good point. Yeah. To, yeah. Yeah. Because they're, the right. prota- they're the protagonists. Like, yeah. The family. Yeah. The yeah. 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 Right. It's a hard yeah. one. It's a hard one to pin down. I love man. it. I love that. No, it, that's what makes it kind of. That's why I it's love that we don't know. Hey, I don't. I I can't call it. Yeah, <laughs> me neither. And I think that's a perfect. What you just said, Jamie, brings us to our next point, which is the monster. Monster in the house. In the house. Uh, what yeah. What is the sin? What is the sin? Yeah. You want to explain Who's monster sinning? in the su- in the yeah, house and does monster. it apply here? Yeah, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure that it does, but I can see why. I consider this Jamie's this favorite is... film term too. By the way, <laughs> what monster in the house? Yeah, you say it's, it's like it's, your thing, man. It's funny. <laughs> they, it's a subgenre. Uh, yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Of, of the genres, um, this uh, Blake Snyder, Save the Cat. Uh, he has a section. Book three. Yep. Well, this is book one. Uh, <laughs> book three, the best book. The best yeah. one. Right. Uh, I still have to find the page number. Uh, so. <laughs> Monster in the House. Uh, Blake Snyder has these genres, and when he calls genres, it kind of confuses the term. I almost wish he used a different term, which I always say too. They're more like story patterns. Uh, yeah, patterns, patterns is tell. a way is a way easier to way. That's how that. I always yeah. teach my students. I say they're patterns because th- so don't think of horror and stuff. So his are more of these story patterns. Um, Golden Fleece would be somebody going on a quest to win a prize. Um, Full triumphant would be kind of some ridiculous character coming up against the establishment or something. 
Um, and then there's Monster in the House, which is my favorite. Um, <laughs> and it honestly, I think it's the best to find one too. I don't know why. It just I love it all. Clicks the title the covers the entire and, thing. And, and so, you've yeah. mentioned plenty of examples that are Monster in the House that aren't horror that aren't movies. horror movies. Yeah, so, and that's what I love so about it's the, it too. The pattern. It's the pattern. Even yeah. though most horror movies fall into Monster in the House pattern, almost like Jaws or Jurassic Park of them. would be Monster in the Jaws, House. Jaws, Jurassic Park, mm-hmm. The Conjuring, The Exorcist, mm-hmm. all these movies. Anything where there's like a perimeter of yeah. sorts, even in the mind. And, and they have I patterns think that, for the way that the story the that unfolds. That, I think if you feel like, because I think a, this is going off topic just so slightly, but I think I think a big part of it, the house, is a trap. So it's the loss of con- personal control. Like you have it's no the, control. It's the over. thing you, the character can't control. You can't control it. Right, That's right. the loss. That's the house. Um, so anyway, the monster now says three things: a monster, a house. What am I missing? I can't the remember. Sin. The sin. Uh, <laughs> it was funny. I was thinking there was one more before the sin, but the sin. So the sin is an interesting part. Usually, there's a sin. Uh, that brings about the monster. Can you in give some us ways. a famous example that you can think of. Um, not closing the beaches in Jaws would be yeah. an example of a sin. Um, I yeah. can think of that. Uh, like crawl, crawl recently, crawl. Mm-hmm. Uh, they didn't take Mother Nature. They didn't respect Mother Nature, and they decided to stay, even though they had extreme extreme reasons to stay. She still it, stayed. So, like Jurassic Park, it's fooling with nature. Absolutely not it's respecting not nature. respecting yeah. nature. Yeah. yeah. So, sometimes it could even be a. I don't know the if this really translates nature. the power, yeah. But like back in the day, Friday the Thirteenth, to have sex, you die, is in some ways a smaller version of right, it. Right? Yes. We talked about Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. Um, and, not respecting. I can't remember what it was exactly. Yeah, but. and the in Get Out, we we were debating whether it was uh, Chris's uh, refusal to act and defend right, himself, right. or it's that, that was a him. nuance. That was one, a that was a tough one. Or, the world, or his, tru- or his yeah. trust of these rich white affluent just, people. Just yeah. the refu- the refusal to Which defend himself I think and sin, say, as a word too, we got to say, sin doesn't mean that it's morally wrong. It right. just means it's, mis- the, it's a mis- the, it's what mistake the, exactly can be yes. that too. Right. I, yeah. I think, and it also isn't always the protagonist. Sometimes it's the world, exactly, like, yeah, like yeah. Godzilla, nuclear war, or something like that could be the thing. Um, so what's the sin here? And and I think by by the way I think one last thing about I the sin. Hear I think this, I brought this on purpose. The sin sets up tension because I think sometimes it says more like we we know how movies work. So when we see the sin, we're like, Ooh. they deserve it. Yeah, yeah they're yeah. gonna mm-hmm. deserve it. And we're like, uh oh, we're in dangerous territory because these people d- actually deserve it. So it, it ups the tension in a subconscious sort of way. Yeah, because we all watch movies and we know that's the way it works. Sometimes innocent people die, but a lot of times it's because of the sin. Um, what's the sin in this I, movie? I want to. I Jimmy's smiling because okay, I, I brought this up because I was like, I wonder if they're going to disagree because I like when we can't agree. Yeah, I, I'm not entirely sure there's a monster in the house, but I'll play along. Okay. Okay. I think so. There, no, I, I think, think there is a monster in the house. I don't think this is a monster in the, the house. genre. But bouncing I'll play yeah, off yeah. of what you're saying, yeah, because yeah. you just explained it perfect. The sin creates the tension, right? right. So what? And I, maybe this is just really doubling down on my experience compared to yours. Mm-hmm. Like I said, when, when when they got into the house, I felt dread for him, yep. right? And why did I feel dread? Because he's lying about who he is. And I uh, think that's the sin of this movie oh, is yeah. is yeah. Uh, basically why would we disagree with that? Uh, yeah. pretending <laughs> to pre- pretending to be someone I you're agree. not. I agree. Oh and, yeah, but and, I don't know why you think we would disagree with that. And and that brings about and and that constantly resurfaces. It resurfaces when they have the family dinners and they're debating the plan uh, or breaking out the plan. And then when they're sitting in the den and they finally reach their peak, their pinnacle, and they have the house to themselves, the um. The dad is is discussing like whether this is something that hurt the people I, that they are that they are uh, so that yeah, they had yeah. to step so on. So as somebody who doesn't necessarily think it's a monster house, but thinks the movie shifts to a monster in the house in the midpoint, I'm gonna I'm uh, just to play devil's advocate because I think you're right. Here's another. Here's when when you put this on the notes, I started to think, and I was like, "What's the sin?" And knowing the theme or what I think the theme is kind of going for. You're gonna I, say exactly what I'm thinking. I think I'm, it was right now. No, well, I think I think that sin is punching down. That's my take. So it's just sort of you can punch up in this world and you're fine, and we can laugh and smile and it's cool. But if you punch down, then you're gonna get killed for it or something and, like that. that and was kind of my I guess. think it's sort of the same thing 
because like when the when the, it comes up again and this is when it does become the monster in the house when they're in the bunker they have the opportunity to treat them as equals and they're lying to themselves about them being not equal to them and better than them and higher than them and so they're like they're like no we're the family we're like w- this is our house now. this isn't your house right right you know and what's that that's lying to themselves that's a disassociation about who they really are and like they're it's even lying to themselves so in that case the sin would almost be it's not just it's not just lying about who you are it's losing yourself it's lack of self awareness. Lack of self awareness. It's both. Yeah. I was also going to say. I'm with you, Jamie. Mm-hmm. It's I don't I'm punching not, down. Punching, punching down, down is punching. good. And I also want to say, like, it, I know I don't want to get the theme right now. Yeah, yeah. But this is a the reason. This is also a really masterful movie is because it's one of those movies where you can easily see the other movie taking place within it, which is if the movie shifted focus to the rich family. It's a monster in the house for them, and they don't know it. On the other side of and it. And their sin. And we don't know their agenda. Ha- and they have sins themselves. Yep. It's hand that rocks the cradle, man. Right. But we don't see those sins overtly because it's not showing their mm-hmm. end of this story. Yeah. But they, you know what I mean? Yeah. You could totally see their sin mm-hmm. from their angle, Absolutely. the movie that we're not watching. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It, it works both ways so well. Yeah. Yeah. So that yeah, yeah, yeah so that, that was, no, yeah, you're and right. and he keeps committing the sin over and over, like uh, Ki Wu. Um, even in the end, he's in denial. And we'll get to that. I think he's in denial about his ability to reach a certain status, like and not accepting that he is not. Of There's that literally status. a moment where he's yeah. put down. Yeah. Of, yeah, and he says, you know, th- that's that whole. Am I worthy? Like, am I? Do I fit in here? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that. You know, lack of self awareness once again. But by, by the way, I, while I said I didn't think it's a monster in the house movie, I I'm sitting here spinning through. I can't really figure out what kind of movie it is. I was gonna like, ask that. That was <laughs> yeah, gonna be yeah. my next in question. In some ways, um, so heist movies are usually uh, golden fleece movies. What are con artist movies? Usually? I feel they're, like they're usually golden, golden fleece. fleece. Yeah, I feel like it's golden fleece. It's money. a con artist subgenre but, for but sure. I think the tricky thing is because there's no deadline or goal or one trophy. I'm not sure that this is. I'm not sure that it still applies. I'm having trouble. I with think it gotcha. applies till it doesn't. That's my, it. That's my, really that's it. Kind of it just was, applies till it doesn't. I, yeah. the, where my head was was the sin brings on the horror right. and the threats, right. and what brings on the horror and the threats is lying about who they are. I, yeah, I could see another interpretation of this movie is you just look at the first half of the movie, and literally the twist comes right about at halftime. Yeah as being just kind of act one or something and then the lock-in and stuff is so that's two. we don't have it on the list before okay. we go into theme let's talk about that the lock-in i think that goes with monster in the house too doesn't yeah. it well again I, very very on the surface it's, <laughs> yeah it's really weird because in some ways i could view the lock-in just as the heist plan like right let's do okay now we're committed i'm hired let's screw these people that's one movie. Yeah, because whatever goes wrong, they have to live with now. Yeah. Right, yeah. So yeah, if yeah. I was writing a log line to this movie, I wouldn't put the twist in. So therefore, okay. I feel the lock-in would be in the heist. That's just me doing right. screenwriting semantic And you think jumbo. sort of the goal changes. I think the goal changes and okay. the midpoint becomes a different movie, Dust Till Dawn style. Gotcha. Because you know, by the time that that the change comes, they've pretty much, they could just, we know as the audience, mm-hmm. they could ride it out. They've they kind of reached the goal where well, they achieved the goal. Yeah, without That's, that problem, it, they could the, just it goes the, on. The it goal becomes maintaining yeah. the, maintaining the ruse, got it. and so now something is thrown in where maintaining is so now the goal. Right? I'll, yeah, I'll jump to the super quick. So the midpoint. One thing about midpoint. They're related. They're the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the midpoints. One thing um, that like Blake Snyder I knew used to say a uh, false victory. Uh, so a lot of times, like let's say you're, yeah, yeah, let's yeah. say you're structuring your movie. If you have, and another thing Blake always used to say was a lot of time midpoints are party scenes. There's some kind of party. They're like Iron Man coming out. Hey, we're you know we're having a party or something like yeah. that. Scream, I think, has a party scene yeah. at the midpoint. And this one, it's kind of a party scene. Yeah, they got the it's food the out. Family they're party. Out. They're yeah. celebrating. And a lot of they times, they achieve their goal. When you're structuring your movie, if you if you have your outline and you're trying to fill the spots, like where's the midpoint? A lot of times, if you think there's going to be some kind of victory somewhere, it's usually that midpoint. And then it twists, it turns, it's a false victory, and that's when something triggers, like we see here, 
the bad guys close in section. Of okay. It. So okay. that's usually what I, happens. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I mean, it's, that's perfectly described that's what perfectly happens. Described. So, yeah. <laughs> so this is a yeah. great midpoint. It's fantastic. Example. It really is. So my question, yeah, and I think you've you've you could, you you've, could feel it coming. Yeah. Yeah, you've swayed you know? me toward thinking that 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 the lock in is is the before the heist, like when they're trying to you know get all the family together. Because my 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 mind was thinking, well, isn't the big problem? comes once the bunker scene we're happens. saying it like it's a spoiler but yeah yeah no <laughs> yeah. That, but 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 i think you're right I think, yeah yeah it's it's a tricky movie too and this is when you're writing your own movies this i always have trouble with these kind of movies where there's no end in sight like the movie we're watching when they're heisting what were you thinking the movie was going to be before the monster showed up did you have any i mean thoughts i in your head? What's great about it is you, that's not even in your mind. Is yeah, that, I wanted to talk about a, that. There's there's okay. a guy living in the fucking so, yeah. house. Yeah, yeah. So what? so <laughs> what I thought was gonna happen was it was gonna all come undone, which right. it does. That's what I, I thought, and, and I didn't know how. But but okay, so like I think the reason it pulls it off, and I think this if it, it made me, it reminded me of Doctor Sleep in the perspective change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and withholding certain perspectives and then bringing mm-hmm. them out, and that's why it works. They he did a brilliant thing thematically where he put us in the mindset of the Kims. Mm-hmm. So we are so wrapped up in our in in our own lives that we completely are like oblivious to the struggles of the people beneath us, mm-hmm. which is mm-hmm. what that is. And like it's like, theme, oh, my God, theme. that couldn't be more thematic. And that's yeah, why yeah, yeah. it feels like this emotional punch. Like I wasn't even thinking about her right. or caring about what happened or why she might be here, why she might need to keep this job. Like, so you're diminishing her struggles, right? So you're just as bad as them. So you're like, Oh shit. Mm-hmm. And then the second one is I, I, the lesser version of this would have um, hidden. It would not align us with the family's agendas. Like I've seen script versions of this where we don't know what the family's trying to do mm. because the writer thinks that that's the clever way to tell this story. Mm-hmm. But we're like completely aligned with their like hidden agendas to the family. Yeah, yeah. But since we she's, become them, right. which is the way to make most movies. Yeah. Write most movies. Right. And the a agenda, lot of people the agenda think being, I gotta keep, but since The agenda that, being stab them from as much money as possible, yes. right? Get, get yeah. in, con them. Right, yeah. But the housekeeper... We don't need to know her agenda. Yeah. So then when she suddenly is revealed to have a secret agenda, it lands strong because we weren't even worried about Just that. Just like it landed on them. Yeah, exactly. You become them. So it's like these two mm-hmm. little techniques that like combined make us go like, oh, shit. Because mm-hmm. I think most people yeah. like landed with like that it, big holy shit moment. It, it seems obvious. Also, that they're not the first ones. Yes. Oh my God. I like think, this is just a cycle. Like, I think that woke them up to like maybe we're not as clever as we <laughs> right? thought we were. <laughs> it's a reality check. Yeah, of it's their a reality stasis, check of yeah, their yeah. status. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It seems so obvious, but one of the key fundamental things about most stories, like ninety five percent of the stories, is we want to be in the skin of some character and experience things the way they do. It's surprising how new writers sometimes miss that fact. Like that right. is ninety percent of the movies. We want to feel sad when they feel sad. We want to feel horror when they feel horror. And the way to do that is to align us with them, rooting interest, all that stuff. Right. But then also have have everything they experience be the way we experience them. Exactly. Yeah. You have to align with how they're emotionally responding to like what's happening, the rises and falls. And I'll read scripts all the time where it's emotionally ambiguous on purpose. Like the main character fails, mm-hmm. and then you don't see how they respond to that failure. Right, right, on, right. The writer doesn't want you to know how they're feeling. And I, and it, that sort of leads to us disengaging and not caring about what, <laughs> not happens, caring what happens. Yeah. If I don't care how the character is feeling, why am I going to care about what they're trying to do? So, uh, anyway, I was just, I was, I appreciated the level of alignment with all their agendas mm-hmm. every single one of those characters like we the the family we know what they're trying to do to like a detailed and, extent and even the individuals of it. i thought yes the buffet scene is that so that was a buffet wasn't yeah it? yeah i i loved the, how the father like kind of took credit yeah because <laughs> he, he himself himself is lying to the fact that he's like the mate he's like the patriarch of the family he's in denial in this yep. own heist yep he's like no no you're not actually completely in lack of lack <laughs> of son, self-awareness your son was the one who did this yep. you're just hopping on board you're not in charge i love so that so good. they're all yeah they're all lying they're all lying to themselves it's that was that's a good i didn't i didn't pick that up yeah because that good. buffet scene i feel like is where you kind of 
even though they're doing bad things, you still have that sympathy because mm-hmm. you see them kind of have yeah, their, yeah, their moment. Like, oh, they yeah, really do yeah. love each other. Yeah. Right. Their love for they're each other. They're making immoral you. choices. Mm-hmm. But their but, love, yeah. yeah. I mean, I would say something like that with any like serial killer movie or something like that where they have like a companion, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. Bonnie and Clyde type stuff. Yeah. <laughs> they're doing wrong things yeah, yeah. but they it love is, each other is, so we and, love and them it's interesting even then they weren't debating the stakes at, vocalizing no. the stakes at all they're just in it Which together really they're so in it together there's not a single yeah. moment where somebody's saying what happens if things go wrong mm-hmm. what happens if we mm-hmm. fail yeah yeah um, which is really interesting but uh, go back to theme. What? Let's go back yeah, to sure. theme. Well, the, I mean, that's ba- next on the back, thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, 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 I mean, the there. the movie. I think I think most people's comprehension of this movie, their problem comes to theme, right? It's just all the so arguments I see in the theme. Thick. Theme, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's a ton of themes. I think it's pretty I think, blunt. I, I think so too. I think <laughs> no, so but too. I yeah. think there's lots of themes. There is, is totally what I'm lots saying, of themes, which we're yeah. not used to. Like the the American audiences are sort of used to one thing. You yeah, know we're kind of I mean? used to a bunch of lasers, and then somebody says something we're like, "Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the theme right there. Family's important, sure." And then a car jumps to two yeah, buildings. Exactly. I get it. We yeah, got it. I, I think what what's what's interesting about this one, and why I couldn't do my typical moral premise on it, so to speak, yeah. which is William Martell's moral premise. Uh, no, uh, no, uh, no, no, he, no, no, no. He has his own. It's uh, Stanley Williams' moral premise. Stanley Williams. Yeah, he's okay. another guy. Uh, so Stan- Stanley Williams' moral premise is just kind of like a, a Mad Lib way to express theme. It says, vice leads to bad result, virtue leads to good result. That's mm-hmm. basically it. And you try to state your theme that way. Okay. I don't know what the virtue leads to good result necessarily in this. I can kind of evolve one from this. But I'm not sure that there's a character arc that anybody missed so much. That, I'm having tough. a hard time. I, the theme isn't displayed through the characters that's uh, it that's the, I, that's what i wonder like uh, like through their arc at least at the, their no, through their arc. no that's yeah. that's but through I'm, their I'm, actions absolutely no no that yes. it's like the I'm world needs the saying. arc or something yes <laughs> and, you know it's, the audience gets the theme whereas the characters don't absorb the theme. almost like a parable Does that make sense or yeah something. the characters aren't like in the end like oh and the point is everyone should be equal they're not saying that <laughs> We yeah. should get that. We're gleaning that from it, the audience is learning, trying to learn lessons. The aerial view of it. Yes, yes. the aerial view, oh, and and yeah. and that's. So I I wrote some down. I wanted to pitch to you guys because yeah, do. I don't please know. Do. Go ahead. So like you know, I ask you ask what's this one of the ways that you go to character arcs and try to dissecting is you reverse engineer the stasis equals death, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think there's like. I think it's trying to say lots of things, and I don't know if I'm right. I think the the big one for me that I said in the, in the sin is, and a lot of times the sin is where the arc is around and where the theme is around. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, accept sure. your place on the societal ladder. Be authentic to others and yourself, and that that is like the positive. And being in denial about your class and your status leads to false hope and and despair, which is like. You know, all the characters who suffer in this movie, it's because they're like, I can be just as rich and happy as the people on the top, you know? Um, I, don't, I, I get what you're saying. I don't know if I agree. But go ahead. Okay, yeah, keep going. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, second yeah. one is make an honest living with the opportunities you're given, however shitty they may be. And I think it's hopeless <laughs> because mm-hmm. if you do that, yeah. you're stuck in the shit, right? Yeah, but I right. think it's saying your choices are... I think another argument on the screen that we're being shown the pot, the 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 back and forth arguments is, okay, if you choose to take the jobs you're given and you start poor, the best you can hope for is folding pizza boxes, you know. But at least you're not stepping on other people while you fold those mm-hmm. pizza boxes. You're yeah. getting warmer. Yeah, yeah. There, there, there is a sense in this, and I tried to not put my head around this, that they were happier in the beginning than they were in the end. Absolutely. I don't want to necessarily say they were better in the movie. I don't like not that because that seems like a it not a good seem lesson. Like the right no, 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 no. And then uh, that seems yeah. really it, like a bad lesson. No, that, that's exactly it. It seems like hey, hey, if you're poor, poor people learn to love yeah. your situation. Well, yeah. No, and I think Boy. that's I'm yeah. saying that's the, the movie really is, tricky. is trying to debate this. Right, it's right. having a conversation about this. No, it's more complex than uh, yes, uh, simple, than yeah. your standard. Uh, the third thing is treat others with dignity and respect, and that like the last words of the of Mr. Park are that guy who's literally been worshiping him, worshiping him for like twenty years in the basement, praying to him, Morse code him, worshiping him. He stands up, he's bloody, he's dying, and the guy looks at him. Mr. Parks looks at him and he says, "Do I know you?" <laughs> 
<laughs> and the last, and the guy says, "Respect." Yeah, that's the last word. So right, it's right. it's uh, the right way. Be aware of the struggles of those around you, above and below, and, and that's a, that'll help people. Uh, be ignoring the struggles of those around you leads to like death and fucking destruction. Yeah, I th- and then and then uh, the other one I don't know. There's something about planning. There's some statement in the movie about. I mean, they making literally plans they verbalize is, is re- it is is vocalized like ten times in the movie. Like when when the when the son is like headed out to for the interview, he's like, "My son, the man with the plan." And then the midpoint after when he's debating after it goes after to the shit, house is all- he's like, "Plans." Plans, you know what the happens flood, when people make plans. Yeah, right? yeah. well, you know when yeah. people make plans. So I don't know what it's saying about plans. And then in the end, he's writing a letter to his father saying, I'm making a plan. So I don't know what the movie's saying about plans, but it's trying to do something. Definitely. I think it's saying, I mean, I. What do you think, Bob? Well, I mean, as far as the plan thing. Just in general. Well, let me say on the plan thing. It's, a, I mean, going with the fact that it's a movie about class, right? Right. The despair of the father talking about plans the fact that mm-hmm. he doesn't want to have any <laughs> yeah they never work <laughs> they never work i think that co- coincides with the fact that they uh, the uh, the uh, other side of the movie with the rich people they they don't need to have plans they have money what do they need plans for? they don't need any plans so it's weird like they don't need plans and he's saying he doesn't want plans because that'll just give him false hope <laughs> whereas they don't even need plans because money they can afford not to have them. to to <laughs> go go with the flow. Their plan is money, yeah, and that's obvious. The statement about class is right there in what I just said. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like the whole point of the movie. And that, that was kind yeah. of my my thing. Right? With it. it almost felt I like that in some yeah. ways. In some ways, nihilistic. This movie. That's what. Yeah, because I wanted to get into that. What felt, do you guys? But it, it's definitely on the side of the poor. It it is. It, you know what I mean? It's leaning that there's a there's I, a message there. I, for, I don't know that it offers. How to get out of no. it? No, I think it asks, but so, but yeah, so it just asks because you to ask. Because here's yeah. here's here's the way I feel about it. On one hand, it it's not saying fight for money because then you'll be happy because that's the, the ruin of all of them. Yeah, they yeah, all yeah, yeah. they all get fucked over because of the the money. Riches, yeah. Um, they they seem happier in the beginning, but that's a shitty life. So, um, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know that in this world. There's really any hope, and it's like it's basically saying in this world, don't have plans, and don't be don't pursue money, how, don't be rich. Um, how, but what isn't the theme though? I, it, I'm not disagreeing. Yeah, but isn't the theme saying that the world is wrong? Yes, yes, that's what the theme is saying. Yes. In but, my opinion, it's like, but this is how the world actually works. We're in a cycle of this trauma. system does not work. And right. It needs to be fixed because here is the example. Here that, is what happens. Yeah, they but, can afford to be nice because they're rich, and these people have to do the things they're doing because they're poor. So yep. the, something is wrong. So the reason I say yeah. it's nihilistic is yeah. because it says the world doesn't work, but it doesn't offer the alternative it, hope at any time. But it I just think says, that's the first, isn't system. that a first step in I, yeah. getting there, I, though? I, I think it's a philosophical... But what's on the screen yeah, yeah. is nihilistic, is yeah. what you're it's, saying. Yeah, I get that. I don't, not, think, I don't think nihilism is bad. I think sometimes it sends a good message. But I, also, I think sometimes but, saying, this okay. world this world I'm that you guys live in... If, I could, def- if yeah. I could defend it by saying, I don't think it's nihilistic because while the events might seem nihilistic, mm-hmm. asking the question and pointing out that it's harming people shows that there's care in that it needs to be fixed ultimately. Absolutely. In this movie it can't be fixed. Yeah, you're you're talking about bigger picture. I'm talking about bigger picture. themes here. Yeah, but uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think philosophy. Also by the kind way, of know his whenever movies. I whenever I use the term nihilistic, people misinterpret I know, it. I know. So yeah. I probably shouldn't use that term anyway. But basically what I'm saying is this the movie, money Lebowski. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. This movie says <laughs> right. there's no answer within this world. Uh, yes. That's what I think. The existing I world. I think it's saying sh- yes. Tear this world down and, and an answer build one where this can't exists. happen yeah build one where this can't happen yeah but that that requires a leap of of intellectual addition on top of the movie in some ways now well let me ask you this ways. how I, does the end coda make you feel about that i was going to ask that i'm not sure what I the sun should becomes we? the upper one percent okay so yeah. so let's just go into the opening closing images because sure, it's yeah, related yeah. to that um like when it opens it, <laughs> 
there's the bright, sunny, hopeful window above him, you know, yeah. the hope of light, because light is used a lot in this movie. We're through not going to talk about symbolism. The, the light is hope. And, yeah. um, and he's stealing, he's literally stealing Wi-Fi from the people above him. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and now the people above him have shut it off. So he can no longer rely on the people above him. Isn't that but when the man starts pissing near the window too? Yeah, and they don't have at that point the the vigor, as they try to, to yeah, say yeah. anything to him. Right, They're right. willing to be pissed on. Yeah, you know. Um, and then in the end, but he's still he he's they're resolving to try to steal Wi-Fi from somebody else now. Like they don't go like, okay, I guess we're gonna have to figure out how to pay for Wi-Fi. They're like, where can we steal it from next? Right, oh, right. go go above down, the toilet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the horrible okay, so, upground toilet. So going to the closing image imagery, and and so I've got a quote from him, and I'm gonna I took a piece from the script, which okay. sort of just like is the in, quote from it, the DGA award thing where he talked uh, about it? I don't know. Okay, but uh, I I saw the quote randomly. But it per it, I, I watched need, I needed this. Him, I needed so. it. It gives it gives context to the closing image. Yeah. Okay. Um, and remember in Midsommar we couldn't figure out what Ari Aster was trying to say. And then in the script, he literally says what he's trying to say in the last lines yeah, of yeah, the script. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so uh in the end he's like sitting in the dark, right, writing a letter to his dad, and he's saying, like, I'm gonna get a job. Like, I'm gonna do this right. But then he looks at the camera and he's kinda like, you know solemn and sad and defeated and he doesn't look like a guy who's actually gonna do that and Bong Joon-ho I think that's how you say his name mm -hmm. um, he said maybe if the movie ended where uh, they hug and it fades out the audience will imagine oh it's impossible to buy that house but feel good about it but I made the camera go down to that half basement it's quite cruel and sad, but I thought it was being real and honest with the audience because you know and I know that this kid is never going to buy that house. So that's mm, like yeah, hopelessness. Yeah. Yeah. And then the last line of the script after that happens, it says, over black, music plays bright but with an undertone of hopelessness. So how do you – do you feel like a lot of people misinterpret the ending there? I think – they think it maybe he wants people to be able to interpret it as maybe you it, think he's going to succeed. Maybe well, he's think, leaving it ambiguous. I think I've seen a lot of people say that they're, they're interpreting that it did, in fact, happen. That is that's not him reminiscing of what could. Yeah, it, it happened to, to me. It did make me question like it was now it's like, oh, wait, he can rise up and own that. No, no, no. Yeah. I, I always took it as him. That was hit in his mind. Wish. Yeah, wish I, I, agree. I agree. A fantasy. I agree. You know why, too? And I think this is an execution thing yeah. is because the last shot mm -hmm. is a wide shot. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not intimate whatsoever. Right. So it doesn't feel like something he personally experienced. Right. It's something We're he's seeing imagining. it from afar. Yeah. yeah yes. Yeah. You mean yeah. like the hug? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's from a distance. It's from a distance. Yeah. Your, your explanation makes sense to me because yeah. it, it validates what what I'm trying to wrap my head That's around. That's why I yeah, mean, yeah, which, yeah. which is yeah. saying like in this world, this can happen. Change the world kind of thing. Yeah. The That's last the set. The That's last... why I was trying to say like the fact I agree that it's, with you. it's showing you like we're, we're maybe saying a better the same world. Thing. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm just, no, we are. We're yeah. great. I'm just saying it more in, and again, it's something that is kind of get misinterpreted because I use the word nihilism, but I, I'm more just saying that in that world, in that world, there is no right choice they could have made. Right. That's what I'm saying. Uh, in the end, in if the he end. learns the lesson, and that's unusual for movies. Gonna, yes. movies almost always is like they should have learned the lesson, and then they would have. Right, but there is no it's lesson. It's a tragedy to learn with yet. no clear I mean, positive. There's, there's less impactful outcome. lessons. There's like they could have done this. They could have. They could have just killed the people that live downstairs. It's well, true. or they could have. just Everything would have been but never fine conned the family I, I, yeah, and just I, lived with the I way think, they were. I think the message though is at some point that would eat them and kill yeah, them. Absolutely. Them. Yeah. Or, yes, or the moral whatever. corruption would get the best of it. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. kind of a parable, I I think. Yeah. You know, it's like this yeah, yeah, is yeah. a story of why things don't work. The man and the yeah. family who it functions came to the like house, that, I would the say, servants right? who came to the house or something. It feels know? like you could almost see like a like an like, you know, a, a fantasy version of this with a king and oh, a yeah, peasant sure. and Definitely. everything. It's it's Definitely. perfectly all it's all there. So I mean, he gave us the answers. Yeah, the that makes sense. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, but it is. But it, I'm, what I was trying to say though was like I don't think people understand that that is not happening. I agree, uh, yeah. and that's that's. The, yeah. I brought up the Ari Aster thing because the yeah, ending yeah. sort of leave left people in Midsommar with right. the same 
sort of I, they're choosing their own I ending to, to something that's that not happen, intended. Or, yeah, I was yeah. a little confused walking out. Like I had, I was like, did it happen? Didn't it happen? Was it a uh, dream sequence? Was it? I, I wasn't really sure. I agree. And, and I was like, there's no way he like... could, in, in no way he ended it on this happened. Like right. the sun made it rich. It would just be, that would almost be like what Wait. Hollywood will do to it. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, it's like, treatment and the of this. sun made it. It's the sun. Married now and has okay, a so it, the way I took it is, is that, because of the scene with the planning thing, the father is already to the point where he is aged in this life of poverty where he has given up. The son, while having gone through this trauma, still has some sort of hope and desire to plan. So mm-hmm. the fact that he can still imagine these things that we know, sadly, in this horrible world will never never happen. Mm-hmm. Right. Is, is part it of false hope? It's false hope. And therefore, he didn't he, learn anything. He has a plan, but it's not going to... The father is old enough to have learned that even with a plan where he is in it, in this world, he cannot win. Yeah, I don't know that, what the actual lesson is, but I, I don't feel know, like he, but wins, he learns like, it. The father learns it in the bunker. Yeah. He's apologizing right. to the to Mr. Park, who he just killed. He cries yep. and apologizes. He buries the woman they killed, and he says, like, I gave her the best burial I could. You know, he's 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 trying to make amends, and he's just he's resolving that I'm on the bottom, and, and I'm just going to stay be here. There. Yeah, instead of yeah. trying to fight to go up. And I that just, goes with your nihilism, yeah. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. with your argument yeah. to in favor of that. Yeah. yeah, I was just trying to say that the the movie's commentary on the world makes it less nihilistic. That's all yeah. I, I understand what you're you, saying. I understand what you're saying. If we could just fix this shit, it's it's a window into everything wrong with our world. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? It's, yeah, a, yeah. it's a little what I say when I say tragedies. Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. let's say something happens and then everybody dies, and we yeah. can at least walk out and say, "Well, we know better than them, so we will live." You know, and I, I mean? do think we get that. We yeah. feel like if 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 things were better, if the like Bob, what you're saying, if yeah. the, if the world would change, things like this wouldn't keep happening. This or cycle of this, trauma this, and people stepping like, on each other. This family, machine is broken. The yeah, fa- the, the machine is broken. Yeah. <laughs> that family wouldn't be driven to be con men right. if they had a living wage. Right. Yeah. There it is. I mean, if, but that's not a theme. That's like a political that's a, statement. Yeah, almost. It is, yeah, it is yeah, some yeah. ways, but yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I know. What, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, you mean, yeah. and it's all semantics, whether yeah, it's yeah. a theme or message. We don't walk out of that movie. <clears throat> it's how you walk out of that movie. Do you walk out of that movie feeling like, well, I guess we're just all you know fucked then. There's nothing will change, right? Or do you walk out? And maybe you do, or do you walk out fired up to change things? I walk out. Or do you walk out hopeful right. for the tomorrow? Or how it, something it's inside. Nice, it's nice you. when a master storyteller points something out so well that it kind of makes me positive because I'm like, well, here's a great example. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like somebody really put the time in to show the exact problem. Yeah, but here's the yeah. result so of the problem. I, I feel optimistic Absolutely. from it. Right. That's good. That, that makes I sense. guess yeah. like, there's less despair because it's like. Now that I, now that you have a chalkboard with all with the problem written out properly, you'd be like, like, "See, open open your eyes." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Open your eyes. I, yeah, I, I left like it like I'm never gonna get a car. Uh. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. No. I mean, <laughs> right. Um. And, um. Uh, but it's nice to know that somebody has put it on paper. How's yeah. That? yeah. And then on screen. Yeah. yeah. Um. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 You know, what we haven't talked about, I think, is interesting, is the kids. He didn't say anything about the kids. Of the little kids? Yeah. Where do they add to this? I think it's thematic. You think it's all thematic? The kid is in denial. Like, he's pretending to be a genius. Just he's the kid is pretending to be someone he he else. Well, I was going to say is that part of part of the theme is that if you notice, the rich parents think their kids are gifted when they're not. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) They Mm -hmm. view them as gifted and they're destined for something. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where as like the lower class people, the only thing they want is stability. Yeah. Whereas mm-hmm. the upper class people, because they're rich, they have they can afford yeah. to look higher. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Our kids are obviously gifted and they're going to rise right. higher than we ever were. I don't know yeah. about uh I, I think the I think uh is it day Day, I can't remember. Day, I can't remember. Uh, the the That's daughters. That we can't the remember. daughters. It's 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 day oh. something. It's day. Uh, the, well, yeah, because they're both. Day I'm sorry. <laughs> no, the boys day song. The daughter. Day song. I think right. the daughter is there to give us a window into the shifting morality yeah, yeah. of Kim of of Kim Woo, and uh, or Ki Woo. 
Um, Which is a good way to get into character arcs. Yeah. Are, are there character arcs? And yeah, Jamie, this is yeah. the big one. What are the juicy ones? I, I don't really... That's the part I'm not sure that... The, you know, that's the part that I'm not sure that there are. For, I, well, there is. They're bad characters. They're tragic. It's a negative trajectory. They're tragic trajectory. character arcs. It's the yeah. tragic arc, right? Yeah. The downward arc. And and I, that's why I wanted to ask you guys. Like, Do you think... Like, the Stace... It's weird. And this is why I said the Joker thing. It reminded me of Joker. Because, like, in Joker... Basically, he's trying to make people laugh, and that's his stasis equals death, trying to make people happy. And when Joker stops trying to make people happy, suddenly he starts succeeding. It's not a good success, but it's the character's success, right? So, yeah. like, when Kiwu starts, stops making an honest living, stops, like, doing the best with what he's been dealt, and starts lying and manipulating and being pretending to be someone he's not, then he starts getting what he perceives to be a success. But that's so, like the downward arc. When he arc. stops living an honest life, he his starts, life gets his, invariably better. Right. In, right. His, in, his, in eyes. his eyes. yeah. But yeah. we know that that's not true. Yeah. We know he's like getting more. Does he corrupt. learn that? That's what I want to ask you. Yeah. Do you see, think he learns it in the no, end? No, I don't think he does. Do you think when the movie ends, if he does try to get a job that he's going to go right back but into I manipulating people and lying I don't to think people. that's happening though I don't think that's going to happen okay there's so you, no hope of that happening so you think then he did change then that's my question I th well I think does I he go back to the honest living because yeah. again it's always the best way to look at character arc is how if you put them back in the beginning, the beginning. With the I wanted they you learned, to say this would yes. they do the same thing would they do the same thing do it. well how about this <laughs> I think the would father the, wouldn't the father the would father not. learns um, the that's, and the father learns, and, yeah. And but what he learns is nihilistic and yeah, sad yeah. and depressing. Yeah, it's just we're stuck. Yeah. Well, do you think the son would do it again? Uh, I think the son hasn't quite learned, and that's how that ending plays yeah, out. Yeah, I think right? he's yeah, yeah. still. I think he has false hope. I think false he doesn't hope. I think learn. there's still a the plan planning out there speech that works. versus the non-planning yeah. speech. Right. But, but right? I, th yeah, I think right. what we learned is that even the family is going to screw somebody over. Even the rich family, of course, because they're rich and they're screwing people over, and they're not really. Um, appreciating their servants, right? Um, they're screwing people over too. So at the end, there's gonna and they die because of it. Yeah, ultimately they die. I think oh, it's those one immoral of them, choices one of um, lead to death. And I think he'll continue in this world that. But we they have built. no arc. The rich people have no arc. No. Yeah. No. no. Well. No, and the rich people don't really need to because they're antagonists. Yeah, but they right. don't. They're they're another. We're not given. They're another debate of the themes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, like he, the father disgusts well, is disgusted by the I, people below that's him. The, that's like Parasite, the side cool, where we would see their version. They, yeah, they would have their themes. And yeah. All so so right. going back yeah. to the punching down yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I could see. Here's the thing. I could see a version of this where, when they found out the person was in the the basement, they were more inclusive and worked together. Okay. Right. But they still would have probably been screwed in the end because, you know, they're being yeah, screwed. At least I they mean, would have grown that, as yeah, characters, that's why, though. Yeah, they would have grown as people. Yeah. Instead, that, they treated them not as equals. They treated them as, not as, as equals. As below them. Yes. So and, and there's also probably lose. that's where the tragic <laughs> yeah, side that's of the it. Tragedy. There's also, there's also yeah. kind of like there's a theme in there about like the lower class, the different sections of lower class communities fighting with each other, too. Absolutely. Well, yeah. Like, like, absolutely. Like war, like, yeah. The two, yeah. the two you the people cannot, can't afford to fight. That's, that's are fighting. what this movie is saying. The people yeah. in this world cannot afford to help each other, other at all. That, yeah. And that's the where poor people. Yeah, that's like, where because they force like, the world where they have to dog eat dog. Right. right. That's where Jimmy's yeah. thick themes come into play. Yeah, I yeah. think they're the sub themes and stuff like that. Yeah, like yeah, this, yeah, yeah. this is a theme that iterates. Yeah. Spirals into different ways. Yeah. It's there's a lot of. Just arguments. like the world. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of arguments being made here. Um, but yeah, I don't know that it's... I think you're right. I think he's not going to... I don't think he learns. I think he's got false hope. And I think if we kept seeing him try, he might crawl back into manipulating and lying about who he is. But I don't think the, mo the movie defines well, it. Okay, just from a very like cynical you know, film boy sort of way, the reason the end, I don't think the end's going to happen is because it doesn't make a lot of sense. Also, you know what I mean? Like, he logistically, just speaking on the surface, he knows his father is in the basement of a house. Yeah. It's no. weird to think he would spend 10 what, years what to I'm buy saying a house is, to, just so the guy could walk upstairs. I'm like, right. from an arc from standpoint. From a cynical point, I'd be like, <laughs> dude, you could just 
heist him out of this fucking house. Mm-hmm. Right. Buy, buy a cheaper house. Wait till right. they go on a yeah. vacation. And just go get him. The, the new family's going to eventually leave that house. Just get him right. out of the fucking right. basement. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's. No, what I'm asking is if he tries to make the money. To make the money, yeah, it's not. Is gonna he going to yeah. go back no. into the more immoral choices and do the same things he was doing before? I think. I think maybe. Well, I, mean, I think the best case is he becomes like the family who ultimately paid the price. Right. As well. They do the same. He's going to look down on people because they didn't. Yes. Yes. So the guy who did arc, the lesson learned was it's all a waste of time, the which father. is nihilistic. Yeah. In the du- in the in, bunker. in this world again. Yeah. Again. <laughs> yeah. 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 The end. It, I'm just thinking about the end. Yeah. The end. I'm like. <laughs> Yeah, he didn't even need to buy that house. He just needs to wait like a year, no. get any house, and then they just need to seek their dad out. No the, one's going to be looking for him. No, the the father's sneaking up to get food out of the refrigerator with the housekeeper anyway, so it's not I know, like I was he's, like, but he's But he's given up because he, he knows there's yeah, no he, point. I think he I know. I'm like trying to think like life. a cynical, like just people who yeah. don't examine theme, just like yeah. just from a standpoint of like logistically <laughs> getting him out of the house, you only have to wait until the police give up the search. And then you could be wait for them to go on vacation and be like, "Hey, Dad, <laughs> knock on the basement thing." And be like, "They're not looking for anymore. Come on." This is gonna be my new Twitter hot take. <laughs> yeah, like, stupid movie. Yeah, stupid dumb movie. Could easily man. got him out of the basement. <laughs> yeah, right. No, but uh, okay. So I think we. I'm just all... saying there is an argument for that. Yeah. Rose and Jack could have been on the floaty. <laughs> yeah, in the right, end. right, right. Stupid. <laughs> but we're all kind of saying. Why she he... run upstairs when she could have ran out the door? Right. Are we all on the same page that he has a negative arc, that a, a tragic yeah, 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 yeah. and a tragic trajectory? Not a. He doesn't learn. Yeah. It's not a big arc. Right? It's enough. It's enough. It's there. I think it's there. Yeah. Jimmy, I think you put something. Is he the up. main character? You think? Is Absolutely. It, you think he's the, yeah, he's yeah. The, he's the one with the rock, man. He is. The, the, rock, the rock, the, the right. representation of wealth that he then uses to kill people or try to kill people. <laughs> right. You you put um something about voiceover. On yeah. There. So I yeah. Think, what did so, you want? So that? you know, I think we didn't do the structure, and but but uh, I think the two main deviations from American cinema that this makes is the structure is weird in a great way, and. It uses voiceover in very interesting. You know, that's the 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 classic Robert McKee in adaptation scene. And God help you if you, you use, use voiceover. voiceover. Um, <laughs> um, so I wanted to talk about the different techniques it uses. I want to get your take on like using these. So the first one it does, I thought it was really cool. It uses a flashback voiceover, which is we're seeing the plan be enacted to to get the housekeeper out in real time in the present day but we're hearing voiceover from a conversation that took place before they started enacting this plan when they were making the plan mission impossible did this too uh mm-hmm. what well, uh, fallout did fallout. this where yeah, yeah. we're hearing ethan talk about the plan they're going to do and while we're actually seeing it happen it was like really efficient and then this movie makes you think that it's just voiceover, but then it cuts into a scene where people are talking and cuts back out and goes back in. And I thought that was really clever, and I loved that use of it. But Does that count as voiceover, or is that more of a cross-cutting it, editing thing? It definitely is voiceover. It's, it's voiceover. voiceover. I know what you're it's, saying. It's like yeah. a whole minute of her it's, talking before it cuts it, to the it, pizza pills. The only reason is it's I, not like a storyteller, like... Let me tell you the story of my yeah, life. Yeah, it's not an omniscient story. I, I the only reason I said it is because that could be something enacted with editing. It's not a pre-lap... Like yeah. it's not, yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. I I thought that was uh, it was a clever because it made yeah. you think you were just hearing voiceover, and then the, no, we're in the middle of a conversation it, that took place it, yesterday. See, yesterday, there's yeah. there's a type of voiceover that talks to the audience, and, and that's the this, next one. Yeah, and that that's a different type of voiceover. This is talking to characters. This, talking to characters. Yeah, 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 this yeah. is right. stealing audio and putting it Ex- in a different. And, place. But it's yeah, vo- yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a very it's clever way, it's and it's so fucking efficient. Yeah, no, yeah, right. Totally. Like we're seeing other things. I almost happen. don't think Robert McGee would have a problem. You don't think guy. he would? Not he, that kind. Okay, yeah, yeah. that's why I wanted to bring him up and get your takes. Um, the second one is when he awakens in the coma, and that is your standard cheat. Where he's talking to no one. He's talking to us. Where he's yeah, like, yeah, when yeah. I woke up, this happened, and I couldn't stop laughing. And then I went to my, my sister's uh, grave, and I couldn't stop laughing because it's so fucking funny. Right, right. Um, And that one is your standard cheat. That's the one that Robert McKeese says, God help you. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And then the third use is when Mr. Kim is writing a letter. 
And we've seen that before, but once again, it's voiceover and it's completely different than the other uses of voiceover. Mm -hmm. So American aud American cinema doesn't really do this where it mixes. They usually have voice one type of voiceover. One, right. Yeah, one yeah. voiceover. Yeah. And then the last one is the same thing reverse where Kiwu is writing a letter to his father. Right, right. And it seems like he's talking to us and then it, it's revealed it's the letter. The right. letter isn't it's sort of like the the pizza parlor plan. Like we're hearing voiceover for like half a page and then it's like, oh, it's a letter. Like, so I, I just, I, I thought that was really instructive in how it like mixes and plays with voiceover in ways that like we don't usually see in movies. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, yeah. yeah, just good, good pick up. I, it I don't up. think I realized that. I just thought it was great editing. <laughs> really, yeah, that's great. Do you use voiceover a lot in your scripts? I, I like voice. Like, I don't really have the hard rule. Never use voiceover. Neither do I. I think it's. Dumb I actually rule. think it when it works as often as it doesn't. I mean, there's so um, many great movies with voiceover. Oh my so god, that's a stupid. Red, that's a, Red's Shawshank. I, yeah, I right. Fucking so, love it. As a rule, I mean, it's stupid. That doesn't. Yeah, yeah. It's not my, so I'm not I, a fan. I'm a fan of it. I find it hard to do. Yes, well, um, so, where it doesn't feel ham-fisted. So I don't do it often. And I also probably don't write those screenplays that have the kind of voice that it often works. Like horror scripts hardly ever have voiceover, you <laughs> know. You have, yeah. I remember the time <laughs> Freddy chased me around the block. I committed you know, the like, sin and the monster voice came over, in. Voiceover seems to come into play when you have, you know, a heartwarming theme I, for, it's, for in right. America. In America. It's funny. I'm doing a comedy pilot right now. It's kind of Goldberg's esque and it has voiceover. Okay. I, yeah, yeah. Is I've that been, fourth wall kind of style? It's fourth wall okay. kind of style. So it, it, does Arrested it, Development ish. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm yeah, kind of yeah. like, it's. It's interesting. I find it hard. I don't like the way it looks on a page, to be honest with you. You know, yeah. when you mix the character and the two right. the voiceover. Yeah. It's because you yeah. can't read it overlapping it, with him. It does exactly. look sloppy yeah, yeah. when it's like, yeah, the character speaking in voiceover and then they're speaking you in really, the scene. You really have to be yeah. on your game to write it and give it a nice voice, yeah. you know? Yeah. That, but I think this is a good teaching example of how to play with voiceover in a way that is like entertaining yeah, and nobody right. seems to mind. Yeah. You're right. It's especially interesting for us as Americans watching a foreign language film with all these different types of voiceover. Voice right. <laughs> so we're reading it, and like Jamie said earlier, we're experiencing it in all those different ways, too. Yeah. It is really like, for a movie that is essentially like a one-location movie, it is, does feel like a, a like a kaleidoscope of different Absolutely. feels. And yeah. That's how masterful it is. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't go into visual contrast, but that's like a huge thing with this movie. The visual, Just showing, you know... How high they are versus how low they are. Yeah, like the they this, have to walk up a hill to get to the house and then right. walk up more stairs <laughs> to get in the room. Yeah. And but the like that that when they wake up from the flood and the the wife is in her fancy bathroom in her vanity doing her makeup and it cuts to them like sitting in these beds like surrounded by like you know hundreds of people who have been displaced from their you know from the trauma of the flood yeah. and then it cuts to her like in her fancy ass closet like putting on oh well, she's getting and then she's clothes like, to her yeah, heart's no, desire and then it so cuts good. to the people she's party planning yeah it, exactly that's what, that's, that, that, that is, is one of so my great. favorite things is is that the, his despair speech about planning is followed by her off the cuff planning for a fucking absolutely the dumbest party the ever. dumbest yeah, right. fucking yeah. shitty party. No, hey, you want to come? That's, um, like, yeah. that's like one of my favorite parts of the whole movie. It's just yeah, yeah, the yeah. use of contrast. You know, when she's like shopping in the wine store and shit. Like yeah. she just carelessly doesn't I, give a fuck. I, I love her as a character. Yeah, she's fantastic. She's yeah, <clears throat> and she always is planning. She's constantly and planning. Like, that I think that's what's great too is like how much you love her versus if you really dig in how guilty she is of certain things. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you really yeah. love that woman, and you she's don't blind want to it, believe though. she's evil in any way. Well, she's so naive. She's too. so naive. I mean, yeah. she gets aroused by him saying he's going to sell her drugs. That's right, her right. turn on. Man. Yeah, it's yeah, sinister, but not understanding that it's sinister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. blind to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's everything. Yeah, on the we list. talked about mm -hmm. a lot more than I thought we were going to talk about. It was yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's I mean, a, it's a movie that is worthy of these kind of conversations absolutely it's a good there's a movie i, I think terry ross used to call them um pie movies or something because afterwards you go to the diner and have a slice oh of i love yeah, that talk i love it. that yeah. Yeah, i think this movie, movie is totally yeah. so i appreciate I watched, doing this i watched this movie like two hours before i watched the oscars whoa so by the time that it was winning best picture i had only just begun to digest what it like kind of, every you know what i mean like i hadn't yeah. had time to think about i was like yeah okay that was really well shot all right and i drove to an oscar party and then i was like by the time i got the oscar i was like already 
completely thinking about it. And I was like, yeah, yeah it did deserve it. <laughs> it's awesome. It is. I love it's this great. movie. It's great. Yeah. I'm glad we did it. And What'd you guys learn? I I don't just, plan. <laughs> <laughs> don't plan a podcast. Yeah, don't plan a podcast. Well, well I never really had. Yeah, <laughs> but I've been doing it for nine years. I, never I mean, I I think this movie has the arc of its own arc of awesome, where it's trying to change the world, but nobody's changing within it. Yeah. So yeah. it's basically yep. saying the world, you know, needs is the thing that needs to change, not these people or their decisions necessarily. These people are a symptom. The whole sim- yeah. yeah, the whole game has to change. So. I can't say that we've hit a movie like that yet. No. I can't think of too many. That, I'm sure there's a ton of movies. But the type of movies we usually tackle, they don't tend to have this type of thing. They don't even yet. try. They're not no, aspiring they're, they're trying to, to have that. fun. They're trying yeah. to have fun. And for a movie like a that to win an Oscar and uh, be doing good at the box office. I don't think I mentioned the box office. We, yeah, we didn't talk about the box <laughs> office. We're off our game to start. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, it, let's say this is because it's a Korean movie. We we. Uh, when you think foreign movies, you usually don't think of box office, right? Right. I don't. No, I don't. must assume that it didn't make yeah. anything in America. <laughs> so this one made two hundred and forty five million worldwide. That's wow. good though. Awesome. That's that for a awesome. drama. That's yes. insane. Yes. And fifty two domestic. But for America, that's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I probably made some of that after the uh win, right? I oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm sure. sure. I mean, like yeah. I said, it's still playing in theaters. I when I yeah. typed in Parasite, it came up. I said, "Oh, I can go see it in the theater." Still. Well, you know, because half of America was like, "What? What's Parasite?" <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I got one last question for you guys before we end it, because I I feel like we asked our last question, but who's the parasite? <laughs> they all are. Capitalism. I know. Causes I know. It. I know. <laughs> I just kept seeing that on Twitter, like really ignorant threads, like I don't get I it. I don't get it. Who's the parasite supposed <laughs> to be? <laughs> It fucking kills me every time. <laughs> yeah, the reactions to this have been not great. Mm-hmm. From, from funny to, oh no. <laughs> but it's a great movie. Great movie. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I think that's everything, guys. I think, I think so. All, All right. right. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. You have just listened to Writer's Blockbusters, a screenwriting podcast featuring two professionals and another guy. Available only on Thundergrunt.